Hey folks, so today we got a video about what's going to be happening in the next couple of weeks. I'll be releasing videos about dry firing. And we're going to try to get to the bottom of the age old question of does dry firing damage your gun? And oftentimes when you look on the internet, you know, you'll see videos, or you might hear some more controversial things saying some folks will say, yes, it totally does, or others saying, no, I've done it, it doesn't really matter. And uh, those are, you know, obviously just all based on uh, anecdotal evidence, so it's going to be difficult to verify. I recently saw a video on airsoftology about, you know, it is dry firing bad for your guns, and I think he gave a really, I'm a huge fan of that channel, by the way, um, but he re gave a very interesting response where he was saying that it's more of like a spectrum. So if it's something like a Springer or an AEG, uh, they're maybe not as dramatic. They're not going to be as damaging if you dry fire. Um, but if you move up the spectrum to more of like a gas blowback, then you're going to have more problems because apparently they're designed in a way um, that requires that back pressure when they're cycling the slide um, in order to work. And so without that BB in there during a dry fire, it's very damaging. Uh, the number he threw out was pretty dramatic actually. He was saying that if you fire anywhere from a few hundred shots to this on the, a regular gun, that is equivalent to a few thousand shots on fired with BBs in them. Um, that's a tenfold magnitude, which I think is pretty high. Um, so that that's a pretty bad thing to do to your guns. Um, specifically, the gas blowbacks were what he was saying was the most problematic with dry firing. And specifically, uh, non-blowbacks, then there are gas blowbacks that are green gas powered or propane. And then the worst being uh, the gas blowbacks with CO2. So I have here today, I went straight to the top of the list and got a CO2 gas blowback, um, the Umarex Walter P99 for this test. And uh, I'm kind of curious to see what happens. Um, now, I've had other gas blowbacks, and we don't want to test them on those just yet. But um, the reason why I chose this one, well, A, because it's in the price range, so because we want to get two of them, okay? These are kind of expensive oh, to get two of them. So I kind of got something that's like mid-range, they're like 60, 70 bucks. Um, and, but also because I've read a lot of good reviews about these guns, um, you know, you don't want to test something that's a total piece of junk. You want to test something that's at least kind of res respectable. So this is something that came across that it was reasonable. It's a CO2 blowback and it's, um, uh, it was in my price range. So we will take a look at this and what we're going to do is, um, we're going to use one as a control. We're going to fire this one with all just regular BBs, see how many rounds it lasts. My thought process is, um, as with most, you know, decent guns, they can last, I think, about 10,000 shots is pretty reasonable. Uh, all my other guns, my WE, my Stark Arms, they've lasted pretty long so far. And on average, I've gotten about 10,000 so far, or close to that. Uh, here's a WE G17, or sorry, G19 Gen 4. Um, obviously, I like this one, so I'm not going to be dry firing this one, but um, just to show you, uh, they're a little bit different, obviously. This one is your standard gas blowback with a nozzle on the inside. This one uh, looks a little bit different, to be honest with you. Uh, it doesn't look the same. Uh, uh, there's no, you know, it's a different system, so I don't really know if it's the same or not. Um, so that can skew the results a little bit, maybe. Um, maybe he, what the guy on the Airsoftology was talking about, was it had to be this exact form with a CO2 mag instead of a green gas mag before it becomes an issue. Um, so, but I don't know, it's better than nothing and it's the most reasonable balance I can get between cost um, and finding out the truth to this. So, if you're watching this video, uh, help us out here, uh, subscribe because I'm trying to do this and whew, these, uh, you know, the, the, the cost of running these channels and getting these things and ultimately breaking them is pretty high. So help us, give us a like, give us a subscribe. Um, that would really appreciate it, actually. Um, anyway, so we're going to try that out and we'll see what happens, all right? We're going to do dry firing with this one, or I mean, the other, it doesn't really matter. We'll find out which one works, um, and then we're going to repair. So if this can last about 10,000 rounds, which again, I think is pretty reasonable, um, if he's right, you know, maybe a few hundred rounds through a dry fire with CO2 would be sufficient to really destroy it. And if that's the case, um, we're going to find out to see um, what part breaks exactly, you know, what exactly happens when you drive this, the, the piston blow up, I don't know. So we'll, I'm excited to see what happens. Now, keep in mind, though, I'm just trying to see if there's a difference in life expectancy. We all know that, you know, regardless of whether dry firing or not, pulling the trigger, 
uh, increases wear and tear on the gun. That's just, just a bottom line. But what we really want to know is, does it increase it dramatically more than compared to um, not dry firing? And this would be a good test. Um, I randomly, this is also random, I know I did some background research, but I tried to randomly pick one um, from the lot. I bought it from a manufacturer, um, randomly picked a store. Uh, to help introduce some randomization there to help control for some bias. Obviously, I have a very small sample size, one as a control and one for the actual uh, testing. So we'll see what we can do. Obviously, we're limited by that, so we can't really generalize these results to everything. But the thought process is if there are no results, no differences seen in a gas or sorry, CO2 driven gun, and these have the highest FPS maybe there wouldn't likely be any results in a gas blowback that's green gas or propane power powered either. That's the logic. Now, of course, like I mentioned earlier, they, they look like they're run on slightly different systems, so um, they, that might be a limitation of this study that I'm going to be trying to do. But at least it's, you know, it's better than nothing. We'll see what we can find out. Uh, maybe the results will be so dramatic we don't even need to test anymore and we can just stop there. Um, since these are also pretty expensive for, uh, to run these tests, I'm also going to try to see if I can squeeze any other tests. The other one I'm kind of interested in is um, regarding the slide lock. A lot of folks say that when you lock the slide lock or the lock or the slide locks back, you want to power slide it or power stroke it to release the slide rather than actuate the slide release by pushing it down because that, that uh, causes a lot of friction at this point. And if you do it too much, it, it will, the slide lock will not lock back. So we'll see if that's the case. I mean, I might test that later on as like a secondary outcome to check, but I really want to test the dry fire. That's the primary outcome we're looking for first. The other ones, if we can, we'll try to do it as well. Um, so that's that's it. So look for those videos coming out in the next couple of weeks. Obviously, um, I'm going to have to fast forward them because I'm going to sit through here and buy a bunch of CO2 tanks and just shoot, 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 shoot. So uh, we'll, I'll keep you all posted on that, okay? Uh, if you have any questions about that um, while I'm planning for this, let me know. Um, post in the comments below. Um, you know, I can try to squeeze it into tests because, you know, we like to know the answer to these things. We want to get to the bottom of them. So let me know. All right, see you uh, next time, folks.